The argument against Dak Prescott as this season's MVP is that he has played against too many bad defences. It's a fair argument. Prescott has faced 11 different defences this year and 8 of them ranked 20 or worse in defensive DVOA. 2,565 of his 3,234 yards came in those games and 24 of his 28 total touchdowns came in those games. But that's only half the story. Prescott also plays in one of the most difficult passing schemes in the NFL. Mike McCarthy doesn't help his quarterback much. He expects Prescott to push the ball downfield into tight windows and diagnose coverages on his own for the most part. So even when Prescott is putting up big numbers against bad defences, he's often still making very difficult plays to do so. Let's start with this first play against the New York Giants. This is a slow developing shot play design on 2nd and 14, deep in Cowboys territory. Prescott only has two receivers releasing into routes downfield and neither of them will turn around to look back for the ball until they are 18 yards downfield. Prescott is in his throwing motion at this point, but he's not throwing to the receiver looking back to him, that's CD Lamb's deep dig route. He's throwing the ball to Brandon Cooks, who is neither looking back for the ball nor open at this stage of the play. There are two defenders between Cooks and where Prescott will throw the ball, but where Cooks is now doesn't matter. Prescott understood the coverage and he could envision how it would develop before seeing his receiver come open. It's quintessential throwing with anticipation. The end zone angle really captures how good this play was. Despite executing an aggressive play fake and having 8 players committed to creating a clean pocket for him, Prescott is forced off the top of his drop immediately after turning around. He steps up to avoid that first pressure and is now at the mercy of a second defender coming clean to his face. This is the point of the play he's diagnosing the coverage downfield, so he's not only anticipating Cooks coming open in this moment by showing an understanding of where the defensive backs are and where they're moving, he's also showing awareness of the pressure arriving and a willingness to stand in strong and deliver the ball. He doesn't let the pressure disrupt his process at the expense of taking a monstrous hit from the defensive tackle as he releases the ball. That's one of the supposedly easy plays he made against the 26th ranked New York Giants defense. It might surprise you to learn that the Philadelphia Eagles defense ranks 21st by DVOA at the time of recording, and that's before the San Francisco 49ers game is taken into account. Terrence Steele is the Cowboys right tackle. As you can see here, he's been left alone against Hassan Reddick, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. The Cowboys are trying to push the ball downfield so Prescott takes a deep drop. When he hits the top of that drop, Reddick is already disengaged from Steele and turning the corner past him. Prescott's eyes are downfield, so he has to sense this pressure before he steps up and through the pocket to escape. It's 3rd and 14, so scrambling or taking a check down from here doesn't do much for the offense. There are no check down options available anyway. Cooks is covered deep down the sideline by the hovering safety. CD Lamb was initially covered and he slips when he tries to extend his route downfield. Prescott has to buy time and he does so before treading the needle to Lamb for 17 yards and a first down through a tight window. Avoiding the sack here took outstanding play from the quarterback. Adding in such an incredible throw to turn the play into a first down was so far beyond the expectation of anyone in this situation. We see Steele beaten in the same manner on this play against the Seattle Seahawks, but this time he's beaten more easily, which means the defensive end can hit Prescott at the top of his drop. Prescott reacts immediately, allowing him to brace and then fight off the sack to escape into the right flat once again. Prescott's size and athleticism has always been underappreciated. It's shown true on this occasion. Once he reaches the flat, Prescott has an open checkdown he can take immediately, but he instead holds the ball. By doing so, the threat of the checkdown and Prescott running pulls the coverage forward, which unearths his receiver down the sideline for a first down throw. Again, Prescott turned a play that should have lost yardage into a fresh first and ten. The New England Patriots have a borderline top 10 defense. On this 3rd and 6, they get a free rusher to Prescott from the second level. And not just that, all pro right guard Zach Martin is beaten off the snap too, so Prescott has two defenders about to hit him at the top of his drop. Prescott takes another gargantuan hit, but releases the ball just in time to Michael Gallup outside for the first down. Although this was a short throw, it was a slow developing route for Gallup, so Prescott had no choice but to hold the ball until the last second. His patience allowed the play design to work, which created the opportunity for Gallup downfield. Prescott is such a well-rounded player that it's very difficult to outwit him or put him in a position that he can't work his way out of. Third downs are opportunities to him rather than obstacles that he must work to overcome. Defenses often turn to man coverage on third downs or some variation of it. On this third and four against arguably the best defense in the NFL, the Cowboys aggressively pursue a deep throw despite the obvious blitzing scenario. Cavante Turpin was in motion at the snap and releases from a tight split into a fade route towards a near pylon. The space is there outside for Prescott to hit against the 49ers cover one play call. Prescott has to get the ball out before the edge rushers close the pocket on top of him though. A Rick Armstead makes this play particularly difficult because he is in Prescott's eye line to Turpin and he's a huge body athlete. Having him bearing down on you is an intimidating position to be in. Prescott beats Armstead with his release and drops the ball over the shoulder of Turpin as he arrives into the end zone for the touchdown. 
We can't overly criticize Prescott for not lighting up the 49ers defense because no MVP candidate has put up big numbers against them so far. And it's not like losing that game was a product of a poor performance from the quarterback as much as it was the Cowboys as a team. That 27-yard touchdown was eclipsed by this 32-yard gain against the Arizona Cardinals. It's 3rd and 7. This time the defense won't blitz and they show two deep safeties before the ball is snapped. This is a key detail for Prescott's read at the snap. As he drops back in the pocket, the safety on the narrow side of the field to the top of the screen steps forward. The other safety is on the opposite hash mark, so he's not a factor in coverage against Lamb to that side of the field. As all that is happening, Prescott's right guard is being beaten by a swim move on first contact. He has a defender bearing down on him at the top of his drop, despite the defense not blitzing. The defender gets home just after the ball leaves Prescott's hand. He's still able to flight the ball perfectly over the trailing defensive back to Lamb's outside shoulder, so that it's an uncontested catch for the first down, and a huge gain. Prescott played behind great offensive lines early in his career, but he's never been reliant on great protection to be effective. He consistently stands in strong to make plays against arriving pressure. That's how they gain 9 yards in this 3rd and 3 against the New York Jets. And he also understands when to move off his spot, to either subtly reset or escape aggressively from the pocket, depending on which is most appropriate for the kind of pressure that arrives. That's what happened on this 3rd and 6 against the Chargers. In this scheme that emphasizes vertical passing, the quarterback has to have a big arm and downfield field accuracy. Prescott doesn't really get any credit for his arm talent or his accuracy compared to his peers across the league. For this play against the Washington Commanders, Prescott is under threat of a safety on 1st and 15. The defense plays coverage, but Prescott sees his tight end Jake Ferguson sprinting down the middle of the field against a defender in tight coverage. The defender's back is to the quarterback, so he can slot the ball past his helmet into the hands of his teammate. It's a phenomenal throw. He has zero margin for error and doesn't need any margin for error, perfectly placing the ball in Ferguson's hands to despite the coverage. The overhead angle shows how Prescott had to perfectly time the throw to split the coverage between the three defenders. Ferguson is a big, athletic tight end who has proven to be adept at running seam routes against different coverages. He lines up as the inside slot receiver to the wide side of the field on this play. The tight end gets level with the linebacker early in the play so that he's looking back for the ball while the defender has his back to the quarterback again. The deeper defender's posture tells Prescott he's not going to run over the top of that route. Prescott again fits the ball over the defender with relative ease, although this time Ferguson has to extend to pull the ball in. He makes that look easy. You can't really defend this play without sacking the quarterback extremely early. You have to get to Prescott before Ferguson gets level with the linebacker because that's when the ball is coming out. The rounds were close, but not close enough. The Giants get even closer here when the Cowboys blow a protection assignment. The left guard blocks down inside while the left tackle goes to the defensive end outside. That leaves the defensive tackle unblocked in Prescott's face. You can see the impact of that pressure on Prescott's lower body. He can't fully step into the throw and withdraws his lead foot to protect himself from injury. Despite that pressure, he throws a perfect pass to Lamb. All the focus on this play when it happened was on Lamb's one-handed catch. He manages to pull the ball in despite the defender holding his other hand. If Lamb's hand wasn't held though, Prescott would have gotten all the credit for throwing a perfect ball into a very tight window for a 30-yard gain. Lamb is having a great season and just like Prescott, he would benefit from a friendlier scheme. But he and his quarterback are getting the most from their opportunities by both consistently executing at an elite level. This is a far hash 20-yard touchdown throw where Lamb wins instantly off the line of scrimmage and Prescott catches and releases so that the same safety has no time to react to him. Prescott's speed of execution made the pass rush irrelevant, and the combination of his accuracy and Lamb's quality in his route made the coverage irrelevant. Again, you can't stop that play when it's executed to this level. Too often, the best defense against Prescott is actually his intended receiver. Cowboys receivers rank amongst the worst in the league for drop balls across multiple websites. They've had more than 20 on the season, and what typically makes those drops worse is that they come on downfield throws. You're losing chunk plays that are harder to replicate. In that same Patriots game, we can see a familiar play with Ferguson running down the seam from an inline tight end position. Juwan Bentley, the highlighted linebacker, is going to turn and run with Ferguson in man coverage while the two deep safeties widen in the end zone. Prescott sees the single coverage and his teammate looking back at him as Bentley looks towards his own end zone. Because of Bentley's positioning and his great extension at the catch point, Prescott is forced to put the ball high. This is done purposely to give Ferguson a chance at making the play. This likely isn't charted as a drop because it's not an easy or open catch, but Prescott's throw was worthy of a touchdown. It would have been an 18-yard touchdown if Ferguson was able to 
bring it in. Backup tight end Peyton Hendershot is in the outer slot on the wide side of the field against the New York Giants this time around. He runs down the seam and draws the underneath safety. Prescott timed his throw with the safety turning his back to him and he places the ball on Hendershot's outside shoulder to lead him away from the deeper safety coming from the middle of the field. That throw negated two defenders perfectly. Even though Hendershot has to turn around in his route, it actually makes the catch easier for him and protects him from any hit. He should make this play, but he's also an undrafted tight end put in the position of a wide receiver. A natural receiver would make this play easily. The Cowboys aren't blessed with skill position talent. Ferguson is their only real option at tight end. Lamb is obviously incredible, but both Brandon Cooks and Michael Gallup have been inconsistent. Cooks has broken out in recent weeks after a slow start, but Gallup is a shadow of his former self. Since his knee injury a few years ago, he has lost his ability to consistently separate. The windows that Prescott is throwing into when he throws for Gallup are tiny. Gallup's yards per reception in each of his first three seasons was over 14. He's now in his third successive season when he 13. He has only 28 receptions for 357 yards and one touchdown this season. He should have had another touchdown on this coverage splitting throw from Prescott against the Los Angeles Chargers. Ferguson is the Cowboys second leading receiver ahead of Cooks and then Gallup. It's not like he is throwing to AJ Brown and Devonta Smith, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk or Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill. Even at running back, Tony Pollard has been unspectacular if effective as the full time starter this year. The offense heavily relies on Prescott and Lamb to be the protagonists for their success every single week. Whether he wins the award or not, Prescott is firmly established as one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL at this stage. It's on the Cowboys to set him up properly for success. The downside of his success this season is it will empower Mike McCarthy to continue to run this offense that never adapts or innovates to keep up with the modern NFL. We saw how McCarthy's offense previously put Aaron Rodgers at a disadvantage against the best teams in the league when he was the head coach for the Green Bay Packers.